I'm Paul Solnier, and welcome to Heartbeat of Holliston. Our first guest tonight is a person that everyone in Holliston and New England will recognize. He brought the latest news to us for 35 years, live and on scene. No matter what the weather or the terrain, he was there. His popularity with viewers makes him the Don Kent of the 21st century. The mayor of Boston, Marty Walsh, declared May 27, 2016, Jack Harper Day. Welcome, Jack. Thank you, Paul. Don Kent. Yeah. I've been called worse. That's really? good. Really? Yeah, no, so you're in good, good company. Don was a legend. Well, thanks for coming. <laughs> um, for the uh, kids in school that may be thinking about journalism, I'd like to talk to you about your career. Sure. Um, for instance, why journalism? How'd you get started? Well, I think it was one of those people who was always interested in everything. Nosy, yeah. I guess. Very nosy. Wanted to be the first one to tell everyone what happened, no matter what it was in the neighborhood. And okay. It evolved into uh, my first love was sports. Always wanted to do sports broadcasting. Oh. But when I started out in New Hampshire and radio, I quickly learned there wasn't a lot of work. And so I ended up going more toward the news because that was more consistent and yeah. more and I loved it. I loved uh, being the person to tell you what happened. Some of the stuff was really tough, really bad, but yeah. okay. I always had an interest in being there and telling you what was going on. Okay, well, we, um, we've got a little bit about, of you in action, so let's see some of the events Jack covered while on Channel 5. Longfellow are beautiful, but it's kind of like a person you might meet at a bar late at night. When you get really close, it doesn't look quite as good as you thought. Look Unique good. humor, a big heart. And an even bigger legend. Oh, hi. May I ask, how are you? Oh, I feel like I'm next to, like, royalty. <laughs> they truly so broke the TV next. mold with Jack Harper. He continued icing on the highways. Flop like that, hitting, hitting people in the face. You just don't make them like Jack anymore. We've all been lucky to have him and his honest advice for more than 30 years. Let's begin with some advice for our friend the bear. There are a million trees in Athol, and this one right here, behind the bank, not the best place to hide out. <laughs> Laugh or cry, Jack always had the right touch. Danny always wears a tie and jacket. He has some speech issues. A few other kids had been picking on him about that, and yesterday his team dressed up to show they don't approve. We heard that Danny was getting picked on, so we thought that we would all have a day to dress up like Danny, show Danny that we love him. Jack's biggest gift, making people feel, whether it was hope or grief. It's our nature to look for something good and everything bad. For many Oklahomans and the rest of us, Bailey Allman was an arm full of hope. Friday, she died, one day short of her first birthday. Jack was the right man for the toughest assignment. New Center 5's Jack Harper is live in Manhattan now with more. Jack? This latest missing persons wall just happened to spring up here a little while ago. It's the product of people who are feeling desperation, not knowing what happened to their loved ones. You can't walk by without stopping to look at those faces and to think about what all has happened here. Every story, every moment, always memorable. I have a pink scooter. A pink scooter. <laughs> does anybody tease you about that? My sister does. <laughs> what does she say? Treating pink is for girls only. <laughs> Jack, I, I said you looked a little cranky. Or <laughs> that probably wasn't fair, but you did get up early. Good morning. Yeah, usually, Heather, I'm watching you in my underwear, so. <laughs> I now there's a picture. <laughs> How's that for a picture for the rest of the morning? Huh? That'll melt some snow. But the one thing we know, Jack, won't miss winter weather. Wow, Jack, that looks horrible. It really is, Heather. I could be doing a commercial on financial planning because if I'd planned better, I wouldn't be here. Jack, it's, it's just coming down thick. Keeps coming down, Heather. You know, I have a colonoscopy later in the week, and I'm actually looking forward to it. We're happy for you, Jack. My new graphic for every time I have to cover this stuff. But we're going to miss you. The administration is looking into the possibility of, of moving police headquarters. <laughs> Isn't that awful? <laughs> I think we'd better say good night. <laughs> say good night, Jack. Good night. Good night. <laughs> So that was pretty funny. You really did the wide range of everything, didn't you? Yeah, we had covered pretty much everything, Paul. The really sad stuff, the really bad stuff, the yeah. happy stuff. And uh, you look back on all of those, wow, yeah, it's and all the, over the place. And every time you did it, it came out perfectly? Every time. I mean, yeah. I, I don't think I ever did a take two in my life. Did well, you? Well, I don't know. Uh, I think even Jack Harper can uh, <laughs> get tongue-tied. Officials at Arthur D. Little won't even say which building I can't get that out. Take three. Wow, officials at Arthur D. Little dis four, five. Are you ready? Yes. <coughs> what are you doing? Take six. 
So maybe you can. Yeah, and you know, it's what talent always says the same thing too. Are you ready? Like it's the cameraman's fault? It wasn't the <laughs> fault. It's it's like me trying to tread water and get going again. Yeah. So you've been what 33 years at Channel Five? I was 33 5? years at Channel Five, and uh, two years where in New Hampshire? Uh, 10 or 12 before that in radio in New Hampshire, and then oh. Providence, Rhode Island. How did you like radio? I loved radio. Really? I did, yeah. And uh, I worked at uh, WEEI in Boston, which was oh. an all yeah, news sure. station. Yeah. You remember. News. And then when the CBS sold it, I went to television like the next week and started the Channel 5 freelancing, and the rest is history, as they say. Really? Um, so, um, any kind of advice for kids in, in high school today? Uh, I would say try to be well versed okay. and uh, never put yourself first. I think that that is the thing that um, if I had any success in telling stories, I think that's what it was. I let that person tell the story. It was a little kid or someone. Let the story be about them and not about you. Right. I think we saw that in those, those clips. Yeah. I think a lot of people get taken with themselves. Somebody sees them at the grocery store and, you know, aren't you on TV? And yeah. gets to, after a while, especially if you're younger, you know, you start to think it matters. It really doesn't. It's still the story is about what you're covering, and you're just a conduit to get it across and, and make it creative if you can or funny if you can or whatever it calls for, but, but don't try to make it all about you. Okay. So did, did you take some formal education in, in journalism? I went to a broadcast school for a year after I got out of the Air Force, and that school was defunct, so I don't know what that means, but I made it through <laughs> anyway, and, and I did not go on for a full degree at that point. Okay. Any interest in teaching? Now that you're retired? No, I taught a couple of years of writing and I didn't really enjoy it. Really? You know, okay. a, lot of, a lot of people, a lot of the students weren't too into it and they were kind of there just to get through. And All I, right. And your wife Leslie is still in the business? She's at, uh, yes she is, she's at uh, NBC Boston slash NECN and doing very well and a uh, consumer reporter there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And of course, this is heartbeat of Holliston. We're all about Holliston. What made you move to Holliston? That's probably the best question you've asked. Really? Yeah. I lived in Sherburne, then lived in Millis for a while. Always knew about Holliston. Must have driven through it a million times. Yeah. And never really slowed down to notice it until we started looking. And uh, ten, we've been here 10 years now. I love this town. Right. I love the uh, fabric. Uh, there's, no, um, there's no pretense about Holliston, as you know, it yeah. is what it is. Yeah. When Bobby Blair is watering the plants and is volunteering, he's not wearing a bow tie. He's not <laughs> trying to impress anybody. Yeah. And with Fisk and the Superette, yeah. there's a lot of charm. There's a lot of um, great people. Starts with the schools, I think, to a yeah. large extent. Okay, from Placentino. Yeah, sure. you know, all my kids, so the th these three kids, I have an older daughter, but these three went to Placentino and now they're at uh, the Miller and at uh, the uh, Adams. Yeah. Wonderful school system, great teachers. And, you know, it's just a town that. It's a it's a great town. When you drive through, you feel like New England. Yeah. And I think it's very inclusive. You feel welcome. Good. And yeah. that's it's just a great place to live. Yeah. We get more and more people coming out to events. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we've got this Holliston and Bloom thing, which kind of pretties up the town. A lot of people yeah, comment put on a that. A lot of work into that. Yeah. The volunteers. Um, so, um, it's been a pleasure having you here, Jack. Um, if you get bored in retirement, I think we can find a position for you. I don't know. You did a very good job. I don't want to try to push you out. You, know, <laughs> you, you keep doing it, Paul. Jack Hopper, an inspiration to us all. Destination Imagination is a fun, hands-on system of learning. Its mission is to teach students the creative process and skills needed to succeed in an ever-changing world. Holliston students have been involved in DI for 25 years. Participation has grown from seven teams to 29 teams this year. Teams showcase their solutions at tournaments. Holliston teams have won at regional and state levels and at global finals held in Knoxville, Tennessee. Tonight, the Destination Imagination Gray Red Team is meeting to finalize preparations for the second annual Holliston Film Festival. So tell me, what exactly is Destination Imagination? What does it do? So Destination Imagination is a team acting competition that emphasizes creativity and problem solving, where teams of two to seven from grades starting at third grade and going until university level um, compete in different challenges based on acting. Hmm. So how do, you how do you select the challenges? You make them up yourselves? Yeah. 
So in the competition, um, some of us are new to this. Ken's done this before, but uh, you know there are friends and they brought us into this. We were explained that there's a few different challenges. Um, we decided to choose Project Outreach, which um, you choose uh, either an issue or something that you find in community that you want to help with. Um, and we decided that the uh, f Fine and Performing Arts Department at Halston High School is underfunded and uh, they could use a little help. So we are doing a film festival to uh, raise money for them. What is going to be the format? What can we expect on Sunday? Well, we are still currently taking in submissions from just students in Holliston and our friends and just generally. Mm -hmm. But um, those will be probably short, around five minutes max is what we asked for and what's been coming in so far. And then we have three judges and each of those judges have their own films of varying length that will also, as of now, get screened at the um, Film Fest. And then there will be prizes after the final screenings for first, second, third, and the audience's choice. So the audience will get to vote. So are you going to take this project to your, to the, re to the com competition? That's right. So how does that work? Are you going to, you're going you're gonna to show the films or? So, um, Project Outreach, which is the challenge we're yes. doing, yep. you do some kind of community service project of whatever type, and then when you get to the regional tournament, you have to write a play mm -hmm. based around your challenge or your project. Mm -hmm. And it ha this year, it has to be a fable that your play has to be some kind of fable. So they will have to tell about this event, this film festival, as if it was a fable happening in whatever way they want to showcase that. Wow, that's yeah. really creative. Wow. Okay, so how long have you, this team been together? A few months. Yeah, a few okay. months. <laughs> so this is new. Yeah. But, um, and, but Ken, you, how long have you been doing DEI? So I've been doing DEI for nine years, and another teammate named James Cruz, who is also on the team, has been doing it for nine years as well. Well, thank you very much. I think that we are really looking forward to covering the festival and seeing the films, and so we'll see you on Sunday. Sounds thank great. You very much. Thank, thank you. you. This is Chris O'Lawless for Heartbeat of Holliston. HCAT's own Mark Liberty won first place for his film, Attack of the Bug. Mark, how does it feel to be the winner of the Holliston Film Festival? I'm very excited. I uh, loved entering into the Holliston Film Festival, and uh, it was wonderful. It was a great experience. I did. I enjoyed producing the film, thinking of the film, and entering it on the deadline which it was required. It was exciting. It's pretty neat because you did this under HCAT, and so you were one of the only people that weren't a student in this. Yes, yeah, that's actually, I got into the whole film idea um, because of HCAT, Halls and Cable Access. Um, I want to create some creative movies, and they are a wonderful facility. They gave me all the training and all the equipment and all the energy to kind of get my project done. So this was one of the projects when Destination Imagination came up with the idea and I saw the the placard, I reached out to HCAT and said, hey, can we do this? And they supported me all the way. So we did it on time <laughs> and on budget. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good luck to Team Gray Red and all of our Holliston DI teams at their tournaments. The year 2017 looks to be an interesting one for the town of Holliston. Jeff Ritter and Kevin Conley are here to tell us all about it. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Jeff Ritter is our town administrator. Jeff, um, tell us a little bit about the next town meeting coming up on May 5th? May 8th. May 8th, thank yep. you. May 8th, uh, here at the high school. Yep. And we encourage all uh, citizens and residents to come and participate in your local government. Uh, the warrant for the, uh, the warrant for uh, annual town meeting has closed and we've received about 40 articles for that. Wow. Um, many of them are uh, administrative articles, routine articles, oh, including the budget. Um, we have uh, a capital uh, article in there also. F several departments are seeking some capital expenses, including yeah. the highway department. At, uh, they're looking for a front-end loader, for instance. Okay. 
at $147,000. Uh, we have uh, other water department uh, capital expenses and police department capital expenses. Uh, there are many zoning articles that are in there from the planning board, and um, we're expecting um, a uh, article from the Eight Arch Bridge Committee yeah. uh, to do renovations uh, on the Eight Arch Bridge. How did all the various departments do in terms of uh, meeting the guidelines set by the zoning board, uh, uh, by the uh, finance committee? Finance committee, um, absolutely exceptional. Really? Uh, almost without question and without exception, all the departments came in at guideline, which Great. is a 1% increase. Good, great. Well, we look forward to uh, opening our wallets at town meeting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, um, tell us about the big lights project we've all been watching. The lights in downtown Holliston has been a big topic in town. And I believe this started back in the 1960s. It was first discussed. It went to the 90s where they ended up putting up those pseudo lights that are up there now. And I, I heard that it was one of the biggest mistakes that was ever made from someone on the board back then. And to get this through was a process that was, it, it was years and years in the making. Yeah. Um, we first looked at it, we probably had 24 or 25 meetings on the downtown traffic lights with public comment. It wasn't without controversy, that's for sure. No, it wasn't. And the, and the, sh the thing is, times are changing. Progress, the towns are getting bigger. Uh, people are traveling through Holliston more than ever. I mean, traffic is, bigger than it was five years ago, and traffic will be bigger five years from now. And we're trying to keep up with the pace. And, and people don't, some people don't like the idea of lights. It's gonna ruin the look of Holliston. And I disagree, it's gonna enhance Holliston because I think the business community uh, has had difficult time with parking. Uh, people have a hard time crossing the street right now in downtown Holliston. And once the lights get situated, I think it'll be a safe, way for people to cross the street and go back and forth to the stores. So do you think because the traffic was bad, parking was bad, that kept people away from business? Well, absolutely. Like, I know people who I'll see in about a half an hour who would not go to downtown Holliston because they didn't trust the downtown area. It was too tricky to park, and it was even trickier trying to cross the street. It's almost like trying to play Frogger <laughs> sometimes when you cross the street. So the lights were a long time coming. Uh, there's going to be three sets of lights in, in, in there. We've had the engineers that come up with the 100% design. Is it on budget? Well, the budget, I think, is about 1.2. Yes, 1.2 million dollars. And they still think it's there? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And we made some, uh, some minor changes to it to, to make it more uh, accommodating. And one of them was the crosswalk from exchange to green. Right. Originally, it was going to go to the left of the telephone pole as you're looking across, which would have meant the fire hydrant had to be moved, the telephone pole had to be moved, the curb cut to the mobile would have to be moved. But we moved the, uh, the crosswalk over to the right of the pole. So the fire hydrant stain, the curb cut stain, so and the telephone So does that mean it's more stain. direct to Green Street now? Yes. Yeah. Also more direct. A lot of people comment on that. With a small little bump out on Green Street that will okay. add two more parking spots really? to downtown Hollis, which nice. can only help. Right. So it's going along in a nice direction. All right, good. Um, what can you tell us about uh, the Andrews School? That's another thing that's been kicking around forever. Forever. It looks like it's 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 uh, coming to a head. We've discussed it. I mean, it's been vacant for I couldn't tell you how many years. Yeah, except when the kids are in there. Mm. When the kids are in there, oh. and I don't think it's a it, it doesn't do anything for the neighborhood in the shape that it's in. And that that's going to be included in the planning board's new proposed rezoning, right? I yeah, believe they're trying to make an adjustment to the zoning mm -hmm. for that area. And <clears throat> I think it's good news for the neighbors. <clears throat> Excuse me. In that, in the past, there's been proposals for like 16 units. And now under the proposed zoning, it'll only go maybe to eight maximum for well, the duplexes. One of the original ones was a, a, a nonprofit company who wanted to put 16 apartments in there mm -hmm. for affordable elderly. Yeah. And, and I don't know if that would work with the neighborhood. Well, it meant a lot of parking requirements, a yes. lot of cars, as Septic. opposed to eight units now. Yeah, so yeah. that's better. So the planning board is looking to rezone it, and the selectmen have the authority to dispose of the land and building okay. as we see fit. Right, so we'll entertain proposals, yeah. um, pick the best one. Here's another one kicking around, it's been the flag school. 
Yes, um, we've been actively working on that over the past several months, and uh, we've hired a environmental consultant to do an inventory of all the asbestos that is in the building. We had that step completed. We then hired a, um, a project manager, GZA, uh, to oh, yeah. oversee uh, the, um, <coughs> the, the um, environmental remediation part of yeah. it and to also oversee the, the general contractor who was going to be dem doing the demolition. So the proposal is to demolish it? The po yes, the proposal is to demolish it. Uh, we're anticipating that bids will be issued within the next 30 days. And um, the uh, asbestos uh, remediation okay. will start in mid-May. And demolition uh, is forecasted to be starting in mid-July with it all buttoned up by August 31st. And are there any concepts for the use of the property? Uh, once the once the town has completed the demolition of the pro of the property, it will be reverted back to the school department to see what they okay. want to do with it. So they'll yeah. get it. But we will need an, ad an additional appropriation at town meeting. Uh, we have the money at the moment to do the environmental piece of it, but oh. we do not have the money appropriated to do the demolition piece. Any idea so, what you're expecting in terms of cost? Well, the total project is estimated to be just under a million dollars. Wow. Okay. Um, so speaking of environmental, we we are now a green, green communities. <laughs> Yes, we are. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, last week we filed our final report on the first phase of our uh, grant. Um, as you may recall, we received, the town of Holliston received $147,000 to do energy improvements and efficiencies at the um, at the central fire station, at the police station, and at the uh, town hall. We got that final report approved by okay, uh, the good. Department of Environmental Protection last week, and we're on the um, uh, the precipice this week of filing a new, another grant, phase two of the Green Communities Program, which will be a $245,000 grant, uh, which will be looking at doing further um, weatherization and energy efficiency improvements at the library, at the senior center uh, and a new boiler at the uh, town hall oh. and perhaps the most exciting piece of it for me is that uh, we're going to be looking at rolling out a new electric vehicle program for the town oh really you mean for the town employees at yes inspectors and that sort of thing yes so uh, being a green communities uh, opens us to all kinds of uh, financial support from from the state and federal or well just it's just the commonwealth of massachusetts okay. at the moment yeah. okay good yeah um the uh, 1750 Washington Street Parks and Rec building, that's been uh, ongoing now. Um, is it filling out? Is it filling in? Uh, uh, what's the use currently and proposed? Well, the best of my knowledge, the elevator shaft is going up. I think Steve Gallagher, used to be a Holliston resident, is building it. I saw him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that's going up. And once that's up, uh, it's under the auspices of the Recreation Department. Uh, we uh, Youth and Family Services and the veteran services there. And we just added mm -hmm. an office for uh, another veteran service, correct? A regional right. veteran service? Yes. Yeah. Are there any proposals for any other departments to go in or anything else to be used? There was some talk one, one not time at, about not at, the, not at the moment. Uh, there's okay. not any talk about it. But, I mean, the elevator shaft to make the building handicapped accessible uh, has been, the construction was completed last week. Okay. And uh, this is a $110,000 project. Uh, the elevator has been ordered. Uh, we expect that the, uh, the elevator shaft with the elevator installed will be done most likely within the next month. And the uh, well. inf best information I'm getting from Parks and Rec is that their programs are a major success now. Now that they have a new oh, space right. yeah. and they're filling out and it's a, it's a waiting list. Great. Good. Yeah. Um, the other big project coming up, you mentioned it in your discussion on town meeting, was the Eight Arch Bridge. The selectmen appointed a committee and I understand they're working diligently to uh, bring something forward to town meeting. Yes. One thing, Dennis Ferrara is the, uh, is the head of this committee. Dennis is awesome. <laughs> He's one of the preeminent engineers for bridges in the state. And I think he just finished a big one down in the Fall River area, so right. he knows his stuff. Uh, this has unique challenges. You want to maintain the historic quality of the bridge, and you still want it safe for people to walk and, and, and so bike the, across. So the goal is to make it eventually open as part of the rail trail. Correct. So it's going to mean some fencing, some guardrails kind of thing. Yeah. Right. I'm glad that we have a good group, a whole uh, Herb Rockets involved in yeah. a good... Yeah a good bunch of people looking after it. And then lastly, on a green note, is our uh, this year we're going to be hosting the America in Bloom Symposium, right? So we're going to be bringing maybe as many as 40 communities from all around the United States to Holliston. One of the good things that we're not being judged this year. Right. We're the host community. And there was questions about the downtown construction of the traffic lights as opposed to um, Holliston and Bloom, who's going to be doing what? We've told the traffic people, go, do your thing. 
Um, and we're going to not stop right. for American yeah. Bloom. Nobody wants that. Make us move one day here, move Wednesday to a Thursday, go back. We could do that. Yeah. Well, well I, delay I attended one of the uh, American Bloom symposiums in Holland, Michigan, and it was right downtown, and they gave walking tours of downtown, and they must have had a mile of streets totally torn up that people had to <laughs> cross in dirt roads and stuff, so it didn't bother anybody. So you're right, just keep it going forward. It's good to hear. And the, and the construction will cause some unique problems that we may not anticipate, but we ought to try and keep in front of everything. Yeah, okay. Be a traffic control, how it's going to work out with, uh, with the HIB, AIB symposium, and try to make it work okay. the best way we can. A anything else that uh, we haven't covered tonight that uh, you feel uh, folks should know about? No, I just think it's a great opportunity for Holliston to be showcased in the American in Bloom. Yeah. It's, it's a national All symposium. Right, it's, a, it's a tremendous opportunity to, uh, for us to show off our great quality of life and uh, all the commitment of the citizen volunteers. Yeah, yeah, great. Yeah, I mean, we're all looking forward to it. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Should the town of Holliston have its own Facebook page? I think it should. Why? Because you're left behind if you don't. Everybody has a Facebook page. And so many people, their whole lives are on Facebook. If you want them to know something about what's going on in town, put it in front of them on Facebook. They'll link to it. They'll see it without ever having to go to the Facebook site. I'm not a big fan. Thank you. <laughs> All right, good. Well, Holliston certainly has a lot of opportunities and challenges ahead in 2017. For the rest of the show, we are featuring stories about the Holliston Public Library. Let's listen. The Gilman Room at the Holliston Public Library is our Great. community Thank room. Thank you, guys. It is home to Thomas the Tank Engine, a Lego sculpture donated by Caitlin and Colin Girardi, and a wide variety of library programs for children and adults. It is also a showcase for local artists. Right now, the Cheryl Cohen Mosaic Art Center students are exhibiting. Cheryl teaches mixed media mosaics, which include tile, shells, rocks, jewelry, broken plates, and other found objects. Pieces are inspired by the students' pets, like Buddy the Cat, and by one mother's son's guitar. All ages are in the show, from experienced quilters to the nine-year-old who made this chicken. Her favorite thing about mosaics is to be creative and to do whatever you want. And Cheryl's students do just that. You can use anything to make a mosaic, even a shoe. You can preserve family heirlooms in mirrors and picture frames. People who thought they never had artistic talent can create memories of the beach and ocean. To quote one student, mosaics put me in a happy place. The show can be seen at the library for February and March. For more information, visit www.cherylcohenmosaics.com. This is Chris O'Lawless. Makes me almost want to try mosaics. Our library also sponsors performing arts events like the Copley Cats. Recently, this woman's a cappella group brought their harmonies and clever choreography to the library. Holliston Public Library, we have a free concert funded by a Mass Cultural Council grant. It's the Copley Cats, a women's a cappella group. It's just one of the many exciting programs we've had this winter at the library. Let's listen. Well, thanks for spending your Saturday night with us. Thanks, thanks for, for having us. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did the Copley Cats get started? Uh, the Copley Cats started um, back in 1985, if I'm not mistaken, um, by um, a group of Mount Holyoke women who missed the a cappella times in their college and uh, wanted to start something, keep it going, um, even into adulthood. And it's been going ever since. We don't have any original members in the group anymore, but um, we do have many who've been stand who've been with the group for quite a long time. Really? So um, how do you get into the group? How do you find out about it? 
Uh, we have auditions every once in a while if we need feel like we need some new members into the group to add some more voices. Um, we're actually having auditions uh, coming up this soon in two months. Um, but we just basically advertise around our neighborhoods. We put things on Facebook, um, Twitter, that kind of stuff. And how did were you guys singers in your in the past, or how did you get into singing? I started singing in middle school, and I've been singing ever since. Um, my college was a tech school, so I didn't get to sing so much there. So I was really happy to find the Copley Cats after I graduated. And you? Um, I actually went to music school. I, um, this is also kind of my job, uh, but I um, but I uh, haven't had an opportunity to sing in an a cappella group before. And um, a friend turned me on to auditions, and you know, and here we are. So. <laughs> So I'm curious, in this whole world, everything is virtual. So why sing now if you can do virtual? Take this sure. <laughs> well, yeah. um, there's something about that, you know, tangible connection, and especially, I mean, for me, I feel, you know, really passionate about um, live concerts and, and the exchange of energy between the audience and the performers. It's something really magical and, and something you you just don't get anywhere, and you can't you can't feel it the same way in just a digital connection. It's you need to be in person to really to really experience the full magic. So. That's the best thing about performing? Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. For sure. And um, do you travel all over the place, or how do you get your gigs? Um, mostly we seek them out. Uh, some people, some gigs get sent to us, too. Um, uh, but we are up for doing a lot of different things. I mean, obviously, like one of our, one, another recent gig we had was just a, a private birthday party. And that one was a lot of fun, too. Uh, versus everything from that to, like, sing that thing and... and um, and things like that. So uh, mostly it's um, fairly local. I would say we stay within New England. We don't really go outside, but, um, but yeah. Well, thanks for coming tonight. We're looking forward to the concert. And uh, let's go listen. Sounds All right. Good. Thank you very thank much. You. <laughs> for Heartbeat of Holliston, this is Chriso Lawless. This talented group gave everyone a very special evening at the library. Did you know the Holliston Public Library is 113 years old? The Free Public Library was established in 1876 with a $1,000 gift given in memory of Eliza Bullard, Elias Bullard. Others followed with their funds matched through the dog licensing tax. When land on Washington Street was given by Elizabeth Burnap in 1900, Reverend Nicholas Vanderpil wrote to steel magnate Andrew Carnegie asking for funds to build a library. Born the son of a poor weaver in Scotland, Carnegie made a fortune in steel and railroads and became an extremely generous philanthropist. He donated more than $40 million for 1,769 new library buildings across America. The idea that every person could read a, every book in the library for free took a huge leap forward. Holliston is one of 43 Carnegie libraries in Massachusetts. The cost was just over $10,000. What would Andrew Carnegie think of our library today? Well, we welcome Leslie McDonald, our library director, and Tammy Page, head of circulation, to tell us. Welcome. Thank you. A lot of things to talk about, a lot of new things at the library. It's not your grandmother's library anymore. Um, the big new item we want to start off with is this Roku. Uh, Leslie, can you tell us about that? Uh, Roku is a streaming stick. Um, people buy them for their home. Um, and we thought if we bought some at the library, people could take them out. People are uh, very often curious about Netflix. That's a great way to use Netflix is using a Roku. Um, and what it basically does is the ones that we um, circulate have movies on them, new movies. They have free channels on them that people can use, Smithsonian, PBS Kids, that sort of thing. So you have this Roku thing mm -hmm. um, instead of uh, <coughs> cable TV? It's the conduit Possibly. which you can get to Netflix, the movies, and the free channels. All right, so you plug this into your computer, and then you get, you get your Netflix? TV. Mm -hmm. You plug it into your TV. Your TV, yep. okay. It's an HD. Oh, I um, see, yep. Oh, yeah, it's a the bigger, HD port, yep. yep. And then it comes with a remote control. And you need wireless in your house, which a lot of people have. Right. That's all you need. Really? And yeah. it's a chance for people all to try it out. 
try Netflix before they get a subscription or buy one. Um, and it, it's been really popular. So, and, and that's the bag it comes in? This is the bag that it so comes in. So somebody checks it out of the library? Yep, it has the power cord in it and some directions and these other um, pieces go in it. So you can check it out, take it, and go. How long have you been offering this? About a year. Really? And is it out a lot? It's out always. All the time. So, like, for instance, the Netflix, does that give you access to, like, you had yep. a contract Just at like home? you had Netflix. Yep. No right. And, and if somebody signs it out, how long do they keep it? Three weeks. Three weeks? Wow. Well, so I'm going to get on on that. It's, it's great. They're always yeah. out. And then you can make the decision whether you want to get a subscription to Netflix or buy a Roku. You know, there's, there's other products that are competing with Roku, but we went with Roku because it's easy to use. So. Okay. And is, is it so popular that it's actually a waiting list sometimes? Yes. Times? Yes. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, so what else is going on at the library these days? Well, you know, we, we kind of say that now that the library comes to you to some extent. Um, Ebooks are really popular. Downloadable audio is really popular. Um, a lot of stuff is um, delivered digitally, electronically. And so people can go to our website and hook up with OverDrive, which gets them to ebooks that they can put on their iPad, their Kindle, their they can Nook. actually download them. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And downloadable audio. I listen to um, audiobooks on my phone all the time, every morning. And they just download them. And unlike a print book, you don't have to bring it back. It just goes away when you've come to the end of the loan period. Wow. Um, and that's been really nice for people. Um, rather, it doesn't cost anything. Um, there are some waiting lists for really popular stuff, but um, the library kind of comes to you. And once you have that at home on your own computer or something, can you mm -hmm. share it with somebody else? Uh, you can't share it with someone else. It's just really for so your that's device. that's how they protect the copyrights. It's really just your device, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then all the programs that you folks are offering all the time, yeah. the, both down in the children's room. We do. We do. Uh, We've been really busy. Um, anything coming up that uh, we should um, know about? One thing that the Friends of the Library have worked on um, is Storybook Trail, which if you've been out to the Rails for Trails near Cross Street, right. there are all those those yep. great little wooden um, things there. Exactly. Um, right. We're going to be changing the book for the spring, so there'll be new a new book every once in a while, and it allows children to walk along at each station and read another page of a 32-page uh, children's book. Wow. And, and so who it's does been that nice for thing. you? Do you folks uh, the do Friends you? of the Library. Friends and, of the Library. Um, Jamie Ogilvie, which is a, he's a local um, Eagle Scout, uh, he worked on that for his Eagle Scout project. So that's oh, been great. Right, I remember. So walkers, you know, the weather's getting better now. Can you know, yeah. look for it while they're out there with their and kids. And how's the library building doing physically? We got a new boiler, and um, we're you know looking at uh, hopefully a new roof, new air conditioning. Um, Jeff mentioned some um, weather. Uh, you know, uh, insulation. So we're we're moving in that direction of trying to um, replace some of the things that have gotten older. So. And, and you you also have some book clubs. I know I published that. We do. For you. Yeah, we um, do. Are there several book clubs that meet? We have one that meets um, the first Monday of every month that um, Leslie and I are part of. Um, that's welcome. Everybody's welcome to come to that. Who decides what book you read? The group does. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. We put together a long list, and then we vote on it with the group, and um, the, that's what we read okay. for the year. Each year we pick. Currently, the, the mosaics are in the Gilman room. Mm -hmm. how, how do people go about um, getting to, like, to reserve that room? They just give me show? a call if they're a local artist or a photographer. We've even had some quilt shows, some fabric type things. Um, they just give me a call, and uh, they can stay a month, two months, three months, um, and you know show the kinds of things that they, they do. And it's been really nice. People enjoy looking um, at the kinds of things that, that people do, local artists, and okay. it's a great opportunity yeah. for them. And how about programs for the, for the children? Um, anything scheduled? in the um, near future for we, them? On Saturday, we have Lego Fest. I mean, it'll right. be at Town Hall, yeah. and um, we bring in a company that um, teaches them how to use Legos and learn engineering skills. There's still a few tickets left, um, $10. If people are interested, um, they can get tickets from the library, and that's been great. We also have a Lego club, so if your oh. child is interested in Legos, there's lots of different and the, ways. Uh, the, the contest, uh, you've had that for several years, as I recall. This is our third year of Lego third Fest. Year. Yeah. Yep. That's Anything great. else new planned? Any things you're looking at? Concepts that uh, we should know about? Well, there's the, the new app on pe that people can use to um, 
come into the library with their phone and not have to bring in their library card. The new app is really quite nice. Oh. And I know we ha we brought a couple of slides for that too. Um, so people can just put their library card on their phone with the app and not have to always find their library card. That's very handy. Yeah. Assuming that you have one of those phones, which I don't. But. <laughs> a lot of people do. A lot of people do. <laughs> yeah. yeah, between that and listening to the Overdrive books, your phone can be very powerful paired yeah. with the library. Very yeah. Cool. Um, how about uh, music? Um, are there CDs for oh, we rental? St we still have CDs. Yeah. For take we out. still have and, DVDs. And the DVDs, I noticed the newest ones, um, you have to pay a dollar for. We do. And that money, the friends buy them, and that money is used to put back into the collection. So it gives us about $2,000 a year that the town okay. does not have to pay for, $2,000 worth of new movies each year that we can get you know, into our collection. Right. So and that's I, I know you're part of the Minuteman system. Mm -hmm. yep. um, if somebody wants a movie that you don't have, can they call and ask and Absolutely. search it out yep. and get yep. it delivered? And they can use the app to order it themselves if they like, or we'll do okay. it for them, whichever yeah. they prefer. Wow. Yeah. It's fabulous. Yeah. So you keep busy. We do. How yeah. many on staff, actually? Um, there's 14 of us, wow. but almost everybody is part-time. There's really okay. just two of us that are full-time. So. Uh, so you get play, and you're part-time as well? I'm part-time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, okay, great. Um, so the library's not just for books anymore. <laughs> Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Thanks for Thanks. having us. That's a wrap for the show. Let me remind viewers that you can watch Heartbeat of Holliston every Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday at 7 p.m. on Channel 8 on Comcast and on Channel 32 on Verizon. The show is also televised at other times, so check the HCAT schedule. You can also watch us on any electronic device with video on demand at www.hcattv.org. Click on Video to find us. We can now even stream live video on your phone. If you don't get email blasts from HCAT TV, you can. We send out announcements when new shows are scheduled to air. So please contact us by email at office at hcattv.org or call us at 508-429-8979. With an email blast, you'll never miss a show you want to catch. Keep sending in your comments to hoh at hcattv.org. And we want your news items and your photos and videos of interesting scenes, sites, and activities in and around Holliston. I'm Paul Solnier. Thanks for watching. Love.